Hello and welcome to this AE Basics tutorial where we're going to just put together a couple of shape layers to create a motion background for text. Now I'm not claiming to be any wonderful designer, I just want to give you the ideas so that you can then put them into practice to create motion background quite easily and quite effectively. The thought behind it is this, text is often static so that people can read it, but to keep their concentration a little bit of movement behind the text draws the eye so making the eye concentrate on what's going on. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a motion background and we'll add some text over the top and then we're also going to look at something called adjustment layers which are additional layers that you can use in After Effects to help change things because they affect everything that's directly below them. So we'll move on to that in a while but let's just create a new composition. I'm going to click the new composition icon here and I'm going to make sure that it's HDTV, five seconds long and I'm going to call this my motion shapes and I'm going to click OK and I'm going to create a shape and I'm going to start off with a poly star. Now if you haven't got the star up you can go to the bottom and choose the star tool. I've been playing with the star tool so mine will look slightly different than yours. When you drag your star don't let go of your left mouse button. I'll show you a couple of bits and pieces. Click and drag, hold the space bar and pull it into the middle as we've done before. If you use the up arrows on your keyboard you add points if you use the side arrows you can make your points more rounded or the left one will take them back to being pointy and then go the opposite direction so that's the side arrows. If you hold the control key on the PC, the command key on the Mac you can change the length of the actual points and also the shift key and the alt key will do things. The shift key will keep it always going in one direction, keep it going upright and the alt key or the option key will give you the option to outline draw so that you can then let go of the option key and it will snap to the mouse position at that point. So I want something that's roughly like that but of course I've got access to all of these in the actual polystar layer itself so I'm going to let go, unscroll my polystar, unscroll the polystar path, there are my points, here's my inner and outer radius, my inner and outer roundness. I'm not going to play around with the roundness but I will make the radius quite small between the inner and the outer because what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the twist operand so go to add twist there's twist open up twist and change it till we get something that looks relatively interesting something like that and if you don't want to see the outline of the original path you can click this button here and that toggles off the path okay so we've created something that looks okay I'm now going to twirl that up and I'm going to select it and I'm going to duplicate it so that's command or control D or edit duplicate and I'm going to name this one hit return on my keyboard and call it my inner and hit return then I'm going to twirl it open twirl open the transforms for the inner which is for this shape and I'm going to scale it down and make it a bit smaller now I've scaled it down but I also want it to rotate so with my current time indicator at the beginning I'm going to click the stopwatch for rotation then go to the end and I'm going to click one complete revolution hit return. So the inner star is now rotating one complete revolution as it goes around. Now I'm going to twirl that all up again, select the inner and duplicate it again so command or control D and where it says inner 2 select it, hit enter and call this one my outer and then I'm going to again twirl that down, open up its transforms and I'm going to scale that one up so it's bigger and now if I click away and hit the space bar, I've got two rotating and one staying still, just to give me a shape. Now you can be more precise with these if you like, but it is a shape that's quite interesting. So what I can do now is I can minimize the whole layer, select the layer and name this my twirl. And hit enter. And then I can scale it. So if I hit S for scale, I can scale it right down. And if I want to, I can also hit T for opacity and turn the opacity right down. Now I've actually made this star deliberately white as you see it's got no fill it's just a stroke that's white and you'll see why a bit later on but I'm going to start off with a white twirl and then I'm going to select it and I'm going to duplicate it five or six times so one two three four five six just command or control D maybe even a couple more. There you go I've got lots of versions in the middle take my arrow tool so hit V on your keyboard to get your arrow and I'm going to start moving them around to different places on my production. And then if I want to scale them, you click the corner handle, start pulling, then hold the shift key after you've started pulling, 
and you'll see that you can actually change the size of them and keep them perfectly circular because you hold the shift key. So let's move a few more, maybe one just here, maybe one just there, and one here that I'm going to again click and drag and then hold the shift key, make it a bit smaller, give myself a different look, perhaps take that right into the corner, and this one here, maybe this one down here as well, and this one over here. And again, you can move them around to your heart's content. You can duplicate them to your heart's content. So again, I can duplicate that one if I like. Pull it out and start to pull it down. And again, what you're doing is you're creating shapes. Sometimes they can interact with each other. Sometimes you want them separately. Now, I'll leave it to your creative abilities to make it look a lot better than what I've done here. But all I'm doing is creating something that will move in the background. So if I do a RAM preview, you'll see that they are all just moving gently in the background. They've all got opacity that's quite low. We can reduce the opacity by selecting them all. Here's a quick tip for selecting them all. Control or Command A selects all the layers. T for opacity. And as long as they're all selected, you can play with the opacity and bring them all down or all up together. And then if you hit U a couple of times, you'll get all the layers back up and you can select away. So there's some twirls. Now let's look at producing a spiral or two. So I can choose the pen tool and I can click and click. Again, I've got no fill, I'm just a stroke, and I can go to my Illustrator, where I've previously created the spiral. Click on the spiral, edit, copy, minimize that, go to the shape layer, open it up, open up its contents, open up its shape, open up its path, make sure the path is selected, and then paste. Control or Command V, and there is my spiral. Now, I'm gonna open up the spiral's transforms, and I'm gonna rotate it, and you'll see that as I rotate it, it doesn't rotate from the center. And I really want it to rotate from the center, so I need to select its transforms and then click the pan behind tool, take its anchor point and shift it right into the middle. And now I'm gonna try rotating it and seeing if that's rotating from the middle, that'll do just fine. So what I can do is I can select that layer, the shape layer, and I can add trim paths. And by adding trim paths, I can open up trim paths I can choose the start property, take that up to 100% so the line's invisible, go to the end of my timeline, take that down to zero, and now we've got the spiral drawing on as time goes by, and we could also make it rotate once as well. So if we go back to the beginning, again, I'm going to go down to my transforms, click the rotation stopwatch, go to the end of my timeline, and click one in here, enter. And now the spiral is also drawing on as well as rotating on. And again, I can turn off the path by clicking this button. I can minimize that. I can call the shape layer by selecting it, hitting return, call it my spiral. And we can do the same thing that we've done with the other things. We can hit T for opacity, take the opacity right down to whatever level we want it to be. And we can scale it if we want, but actually I'm just gonna duplicate it a few times and then I'm going to take those duplicates, I need to have my arrow tool, V key, and shift them around wherever I want them to be. I'm just going to hold the shift key as I started to drag them to make them a little bit smaller. Perhaps choose this one and take it over here. Again, pull it down. I hold the shift key, pull it into place. And this one in the middle, I'm perhaps going to scale right up in actual fact. Again, hold the shift key. And I'm going to rotate them. So I'm just going to click on the one and drag down so all the spirals are selected. Hit R for rotation, and then make sure they're deselected so they aren't moved together. And then I can individually go and rotate each one of them to a different rotation point, depending on how I want them to look. And then they will all be drawing in as well. And you get kind of a motion background look. Now, obviously you can do things that look a lot better than this, but the idea behind it is you create your shapes, you set them up, and then you duplicate them. And if you think it looks awful, what you can do is simply select them and delete them. Or you can select them and turn the opacity right down so that they're hardly visible in the background, but they're still there slightly. So it's entirely up to you how you want to work it. Create all these different bits and pieces. But once you've created them, their motion background, you can then add your text. And what I would suggest you do, again, I'm going to click Control A and keep hitting U till they're all minimized like that. Now they're all selected, I'm going to pre-compose these so that my motion background is one completely separate layer to the rest of my composition. So I'm going to take all of those and I'm going to go to Layer, Pre-Compose, 
on CS 5.5 you can right click and I'm going to call this my motion background hit enter and that's a single layer here and then I can add my text on top so you can just click your text tool and you put your text would go here and then your text can go in the middle and when you play you'll see that the motion background is going in the background we can use things called presets animation presets for text I'm going to just open up my presets and look I've got some 3D text presets here so if I wanted to I could add a preset so I can just make sure my current time indicator is at the beginning and take one of these and drag it onto the text layer and then you'll find that the text decides to do something to look a little bit more interesting as it comes in but you've still got everything moving in the background now say I want to make some changes to this I can actually add something called an adjustment layer which will affect only what's below it so I'm now going to go to layer new adjustment layer I'm going to put the adjustment layer below my text but above my motion background and what I want to do is I want to actually make sure these edges are not as clear because people might well be looking at the edges when they should be looking at the text so what I can do is draw a shape on this invisible adjustment layer if I go to my rounded rectangle tool and I click in the corner here and I click out to here I'm actually creating a mask on my adjustment layer again you can't see anything and at the moment the area that's going to be affected is inside the rounded rectangle however if I click this invert button the area that will be affected is now outside and on this adjustment layer I could add a blur so if I click in here and type fast blur there's fast blur I've got two options I'm just going to take the ordinary fast blur click and drag and drop it on my adjustment layer and let go and then start to pull up the blur and you'll see if I go a long way that the edges have really started to blur out and if I don't want it to be quite as sharp as this I can open up my mask and I can take the feather and pull the feather out and give myself a softer edge to my blur depending on what I want to do so there you go I've created a a blurred edge so it's not quite so obvious you can actually play around with the, with the feather properties to make it bigger or smaller depending on how you want it to look and you can also play with the blur amount you can blur it up a lot more depending on how you want it to look so we've used an adjustment layer to add a blur but also we can use an adjustment layer to change the color and the reason I created all these shapes in white is to show you how to do that so I'm going to name this adjustment layer my blur vignette and I'm going to add another adjustment layer so layer new adjustment layer I'm going to take this adjustment layer and take it below my blur vignette and I'm going to name this one hit return call it color adjust and to the color adjust I'm going to add the effect tint and if I go down I'll find there is color effect tint so I'm going to take the tint drop it on the color adjust layer and then I'm going to click on the white box there and I can change the color and you can see I hope you can see anyway that the color of the items below have started to change problem is they're not now bright enough I need to change the opacity how can I do that well I just double click on the motion background control a to select all the layers T to select Topasso T turn them all up a bit and now I can go back to my motion shapes and you can clearly see that the shapes have changed color go back to my color adjust layer and again I can change them to any color I like simply by moving through with this adjustment layer it's affecting everything below it it's not affecting the text because the color adjust is below the text if I took it above the text the text would also be affected but I don't want that so I can take it back there so that's an idea of how you can quickly and easily create your shape layers just hit U until they all close up so these are my shape layers I've created twirls I've created spirals I created something that I liked and I duplicated it and I moved them around and I played with the opacity and then I pre-composed the whole lot so it became something completely separate I added a blur vignette which I used a rounded rectangle tool and just blurred the edges so they weren't quite so obvious 
and then I used another adjustment layer where I put the tint effect on which can change the color of the background all of them together in one go just as I want by simply changing the color of the whites and then if I wanted to make them more visible go back to my motion background select them all with control or command A hit T to, for opacity and then I can make them more brighter or less brighter and see how that has affected them in my final production. So that's an idea how you can use shape layers to create something a little bit more interesting for your text. You can even apply a preset. We'll be looking at presets quite a lot more when we come to text creation a bit later on. I hope you found this tutorial useful and that you'll create far better motion backgrounds than I have. I just wanted to give you the idea of how to do it, how to quickly and easily make something that looks quite good in no time at all. My name's Andrew Davis. Thank you for watching.